Nate the Mathematics Guy. Nate, 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 Nate. Nate the Mathematics Guy. Mathman, Mathman, Mathman. Your calculator is wrong. Wrong, 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 so very wrong, so wrong I could break into song. Your calculator is wrong. So we'll start with a math question to demonstrate. If x equals one-third and y equals seven, find one minus x times y minus one over two to the power of x cubed. Okay, so we'll type that in, x equal one-third on my calculator, y equals seven, 1 minus x times y minus 1 over 2 to the power of x cubed, about 0 0.303. Okay, but let's try that by hand. So if we plug in 1 third and 7, uh, 7 minus 1 over 2, that gives us 3, a third to the third power is 1 over 27. Uh, so we get 1 minus 1 to the power of 1 27th, and so we have 0 to the 127th. 0 to any power is, of course, 0. 0. WTF, man. <laughs> 0 0.303 sure ain't 0. It's not even close. So let's divide 1 into 3, shall we? Uh, first we get 0, and then 3 goes into 10 3 times. 10 minus 9 is 1, uh, and so on and so forth. 3 goes into 10 3 times again, 10 minus 9 is 1, so we keep getting 3's over and over and over again until finally we have a remainder of 1. Uh, now about the only thing that the computer can do with that is if the remainder is bigger than half of 3, then it rounds up, otherwise it rounds down. So now we take 3 times 0.3 repeating, we get 0.9 repeating, we take 1 minus 0.9 repeating, and we get 0.00001. Uh, 1 27th is approximately 0 0.037 repeating, and so if we take 0 0.00001 to the 0 0.037 repeating, we get about 0 0.35. The wrong answer. Not even the same answer as the calculator got, but that's because the calculator is using binary, and we're using decimal, but same idea. Oh, your graphing calculator is wrong too. Uh, so. For this, I used a graphing program called GraphCalc. You can get it at www.graphcalc.com. Uh, I couldn't take a screenshot of my actual calculator, obviously, so I downloaded a simulated calculator online. Uh, so first thing, let's go in here and change this to zoom decimal. Okay, and I don't like the range. 1.77 is dumb. I want tick marks every one unit, so we'll change that. Okay, and now Y1 is going to be 4 times the cosine of 40 times pi times x. Enter. Hmm. A straight line. You should be suspicious. Let's go and change the range just a wee little bit. Uh, so we've got about 8.85. Uh, we can change it to minus 8.86 to 8.86 and see what happens. We click OK. Huh doesn't look very straight anymore. I mean, keep in mind, those squares are still one unit. I haven't changed the tick marks on the axis. Okay, so we're going to zoom out just a wee little bit more to minus 8.9 up to 8.9. And now what have we got? Oh, that's strange. Now it crosses the x-axis at about 2. That didn't happen before. That looks different. This is really weird, isn't it? Okay, we're going to change this even more, we're going to plot it from x going from minus 9 up to 9 and see what happens. Uh-oh. <laughs> now it crosses the x-axis right before 1. What the heck is going on? <laughs> Finally, uh, we're going to zoom out a little bit and now go to minus 11 up to 11. Okay, watch this. Do do do. That is just messed up. That is... what on earth? <laughs> you gotta wonder, were any of those graphs correct? I mean, seriously. So let's pretend you're a calculator and you're trying to draw a function. And the squares here represent pixels. Uh, what do you do? You go... plotting points at the centers of each pixel where you compute the function. And yes, making those sound effects is absolutely necessary. 
I don't have a sound effect maker of my own, so I have to make them myself. Now it rounds the pixels to the nearest value, and Shoop. people like things to be connected, so it, the computer usually draws straight lines between the points. All well and good, but now we take a wave with really high frequency, and notice all the numbers happen to be the same in this example. So what do you get? A straight line. Looks nothing at all like the function, does it? It's completely wrong. Okay, so now if it's a little off from the width of a pixel, the points form a wave, but still completely wrong. Doesn't even look like the function that you're trying to plot. Or you can get weird behavior like this, where it gets some of the peaks, but it misses the others completely. But you gotta be honest. I mean, it's not really your calculator's fault. I mean, give it a break. It's doing the best it can. After all, it's only human. Not. <laughs> oh wait, actually, it's not. You, on the other hand, are human, and you can do something your calculator can't. Think. That's right, you can think. Your calculator cannot ever do that. Okay, there is a name for this problem, and the name of it is aliasing. Yeah. The first step is admitting that you have a problem. It's okay, we all have problems. You, for example, are addicted to YouTube. You want to stop watching this video, it's incredibly boring. You could be doing all sorts of better things than watching a video about math, but you can't stop watching. Nope. Let's ask ourselves a question. What does a computer monitor do when it needs to draw a line? Well, here are the pixels. Let's say this is the line we want to draw, and the simplest thing to do is to just color the pixel based on what color is in the center of that pixel and so you get this very jaggedy looking line and that's not cool at all. What else could we do? Well, how about computing the average color of each pixel? So those pixels which are covered by more black get colored darker, ah. those which are covered by less black get colored lighter. And this looks a whole lot better. Let's uh, take a look at an example. We have two lines, the one on the left and the one on the right. The one on the right has been anti-aliased and it should look less jaggy. We'll zoom in because I don't know what YouTube is going to do to the compression here. Hopefully now you can see the one on the right is definitely less jaggedy looking than the one on the left. This is the best that we can hope to do. Right? <laughs> I mean, we can't do anything better. We've only got pixels. Well, here's a problem that happens sometimes. If you have really tiny features in your picture, and if we go along and average the color, notice the next three pixels are all going to be the exact same color. Because they're all completely covered by the line. And so what you get is something that still is kind of jaggy looking. There's no way for that pixel to specify whether the line is in the center or on the left or right. Is there anything else that we can possibly do? Well, let's consider the pixels on the right and the left are the one that we're filling. What if we borrow a little bit of the darkness from the pixel and put it in the one on the right, if the line is closer to the right? Uh, the next one up, the line is right dead smack in the center, so we don't color the neighboring pixels at all. And you can kind of see the line on the pixel below does kind of look further to the right. The problem is that doing this kind of blurs the line because you're smearing the color, you're bleeding the color into nearby pixels. Is there anything we could do to the pixel on the left that might uh, help? Maybe we could make it brighter. Notice just a little bit brighter. Darker, brighter, darker, brighter. See, it's a very, a very subtle change here. This is called the Lansos anti-aliasing filter. It brightens pixels that are just a little bit on the opposite side from the pixel that got a little bit darker. And this line actually did look better. Okay, the line on the left here is one that where there's no anti-aliasing, and because the width of the line was less than even a single pixel, it's not even continuous. Uh, the one on the middle is better, certainly, but the one on the right is the best looking one. And again, I'm gonna zoom in because I don't know what Woo! YouTube is gonna do with this. Okay, hopefully now you can see the line on the right, definitely the best looking one. The yep. one on the middle is okay. 
Uh, the one on the left, mm. completely crappy. I wouldn't want that line. Yeah. What about color aliasing? Can there be such a thing? So I was typing some text Alphabet. into a paint program, black text on a white background, and I zoomed in, and whoa! whoa. I see color all over the place. Sky blue, pink, brown, fuchsia. Yeah. What on earth is going on? Shouldn't it just be grayscale? I mean, it was black text on a white background. Well, if you take a magnifying glass to your computer screen, what you will notice is that it's not white. It's red, green, and blue. Mm. And they can't put all three in the exact same place. So each pixel is red on its left third, green in its middle third, and blue in its right third. If you don't have a magnifying glass, you can throw some water on your screen. Really, it's quite safe. Look, it'll be okay. Look, I, I've done this before. Watch, okay? Watch this. Okay, see? Spraying on the screen. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a closer look here. Yeah, you can see I've sprayed water all over the screen. Okay. Nothing bad happened. It'll be okay, I promise. I've done this hundreds of times, and nothing bad has ever happened. Okay, so if we look at the line, different colors get covered by different amounts by mm, that line. Pretty. And so it would only make sense to color them different amounts of brightness. And of course the effect is the pixels then are definitely not going to be gray. They're going to be colored so that when you zoom in on them, they'll look like kind of like this. Okay, here's a couple of examples of something that is uh, not anti-aliased on the left. And on the right, I've used the Lansos filter to anti-alias it. We'll zoom in because, again, I don't know how the YouTube compression is going to do. But I hope you can tell the one on the right is not nearly as jaggedy and crappy looking as the one on the left. Yeah. So this is a good thing. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, this is Nate the Mathematics Guy. Nate the Mathematics Guy.